Hello everybody, June here, back from a bit of a hiatus. I was traveling since I had time, and so I took the opportunity, and I am now back. And in a video that I posted a few months ago now, last year, I showed you some 19th century drafting books um, so that you could use those instead of trying to find uh, commercial patterns to make your historical costumes. Now, in that particular video, I only talked about roughly the last 30 years or so of um, the 19th century because I was trying to make a point about the rulers and the books and how you could use them with one another. But of course, that's not all that there is to draft in your own antique, if you will, and vintage patterns. There's a lot more. And so for this video, I'm going to take you into the 20th century to roughly the 1960s. I am going to start, however, in the very late uh, 19th century because there is one book that I failed to mention at the time, and that is based on the voice of fashion. And I'm going to put a link to the video here so that you can get a little bit of a um, reminder if you don't remember or if you haven't watched that what the voice of fashion is why the um, 1890s is so important for the voice of fashion sort of change systems so i'm going to start with a book that i neglected at that time and that is a book published by mrs depew this is a reproduction of some of the voice of fashion pamphlets from the 1890s remember that in the book series that i talked about before uh, francis grimble didn't give us anything for the 1890s christina harris did but also Mrs. Depew has taken the time to reprint uh, some of those. The book which I have here goes roughly from 1891 to 1896. So it is a pretty wide ranging number of patterns. And it does start with some colorful fashion plates that are not actually related to the cutting system but they are nevertheless um, representative of the fashion of the time. And as you can see here on the very first page, there is a, a picture, well, there's a few pictures of what the actual system looked like and what it came with. And she had this and at one point she sold it and I was going to buy it and then I didn't and I regretted it. But anyway, so here's what the actual system you could buy in the 1890s looked like with the, ru the uh, curve, all the rulers, the pamphlet, the L square and everything. So the fashions in here are very similar to what you would find in the, um, in the Christina Harris books, but there's a lot more of them. There's a ton of them here. And Mrs. Depew also gives you the rulers. This comes with the book and you can either uh, cut them out and use them like this. If you don't want to cut them all out, you can probably just photocopy them. But she gives you all the rulers that you need to work with the system. And she also gives you a template of the uh, curve here, which is folded. And I'm not going to open this whole thing. But uh, this is uh, also a great resource for drafting from this period because it gives you, as I said, um, pretty wide range of years but also things for children both boys and girls so if you are really interested in working with 1890s fashion i highly recommend this book there is another late 19th century voice of fashion booklet it's not actually a booklet it is a full book and it is published by laces and laces is a textile and fashion museum i believe out in california and um, they have reproduced some of the patterns. So the book is called The Voice of Fashion and it says 1901, but it actually starts in 1897. As you can see here, the, uh, they use a diamond garment cutting system, which is what they developed after 1895. And the instruction booklet for the drafting is from 1897. And then they uh, use two booklets from 1901 uh, with the actual patterns. So there are patterns from 1997 that come with the instruction booklet. And then later in the booklet, we see styles from 1901. And again, we have things for adults, for children, um, all kinds. This one also gives you the rulers at the end. And these are just photocopied straight up from the original rulers, unlike Grimble that has sort of remaster them in Mrs. Depew that has remastered them. 
these, as you can see, are just copies and um, it's just one ruler in each size. But again, you can uh, copy them and then um, use them to wrap your own patterns. And it also gives you the curve. In that other video, I briefly talked about Francis Grimble's The Voice of Fashion because uh, the rulers in that book are the rulers that uh, you could use to draft Christina Harris's patterns from uh, her Voice of Fashion derived books. And again, I'll leave a link to that video here because it goes a lot more um, in depth about this than I will go in this video. But you can also use the rulers from the two books that I just talked about. But let's have a better look at The Voice of Fashion by Francis Grimble. So this one moves us into the 20th century for good. This book has patterns from 1900 to 1906 and it looks very similar in design and in style to the previous ones because they come from the same uh, original source and again you use the bust measurement to draft the tops and you use um, I believe the waist measurement to draft skirts and so this one has a lot more patterns it's very big and again, has the rulers at the end. So leaving the voice of fashion behind, we're gonna move on to other types of cutting systems and drafting systems. This book, Turn of the Century Fashion Patterns and Tailoring Techniques, also by Christina Harris, is a reprint of a cutting system slash book called The Standard Work on Cutting Ladies Tailor-Made Garments, and it's from 1901. So this is the modern title, and then this is the cover page for the original book. And unlike the other books I've talked about, rather than using an apportioning system, this system actually uses body measurements to draft. So you do have to take a pretty good set of measurements and they are delineated um, in the books very specifically and it shows you how to take your measurements. And then once you have taken all of those measurements, you get to draft your pattern specifically to your body rather than roughly just to your bust. So this is a lot more um, accurate uh, and you probably would have to do fewer adjustments later on. And if you look at it, it doesn't look very dissimilar to the Keystone system that's very popular and I don't have a hard copy of that so I won't be talking about it. But this is, as I said earlier, from 1901 and it has fewer images of the styles but very detailed explanations about how to draft. Okay. You have everything from jackets to blouses, skirts, sleeves and everything in between. So a little different than the other ones but still um, a good alternative to purchasing commercial patterns. And moving deeper into the 20th century in the Edwardian period, we have the Edwardian Modeste, also by Francis Grimble. This book uh, has patterns from around 1905 to 1909. And I, again, I briefly talked about this book in the previous video because sometimes people try to use the rulers from this book to draft patterns from the voice of fashion. And as I said in that video, if it works is serendipity rather than actual design. But this book is a little different, even though it is still an apportioning system. So unlike the voice of fashion and the other apportioning systems I talked about in the other video, this book uses two measurements. Well, actually three, but let me explain. It uses two measurements to draft. So it uses your waist measurement and length of waist measurement to draft. So for your bust, it's pretty straightforward. You measure your bust at your fullest point, and that is the ruler that you choose. And for your back length, you measure the length of your back from the bottom of your neck to where your waist is. And then you double that measurement. And that is how you choose your ruler. So if your length of waist is, say, 15 inches, then you double that and you choose the 30 inch ruler to draft. So here we have a little bit more control over length because sometimes if you have a very large bust, uh, and you're using only one ruler to draft, garments are going to be very long, even though you are not necessarily tall. Uh, and then for the bottoms, it still uses the waist measurement. And as you can see, it looks very similar to the other apportioning systems. Let's have a look at some of the styles. Very quintessentially Edwardian. 
And then in the back, it has the rulers just like the other books. The awarding Medes takes us to 1909, and around this time, these sort of drafting systems start to fall out of fashion because we have the rise in paper patterns that are multi-size, or um, they come in, not multi-size in the same envelope, but multi-size in different envelopes. And so these kinds of patterns start to become more popular for the home sewist rather than um, drafting based on your measurements or drafting based on apportioning systems. That is not to say, however, that these systems completely went away and you can still find, even today, you can find some of these uh, drafting systems, but we're going to move from 1909. So we want to move from antique to like a slightly vintage. We're going to move to the 1920s. And in the 1920s in Britain, a system called the Haslam system um, shows up and that system is slightly different to what we've seen because it uses body measurements, but it also uses a specific chart to draft. And the way that it works is you draft basically a sloper to your measurements and then you use that sloper to turn it into patterns based on diagrams that the system gives you. For that, uh, there are a lot of resources online. It's not that difficult to find, but I have found that Mrs. Depew's reproduction are actually the best in terms of content. And so what I have here is a booklet on how to draft the foundation patterns that is a sloper. And the slopers, the, the foundation patterns that Mrs. Depew gives us are from 1920 to 1960. And each decade more or less has its own foundation uh, pattern because as you can imagine, the silhouettes change and so the foundations have to change. And so uh, Miss Depew's reproduction is really just a reproduction. So we have the 1920s, the 1930s, and so on until we get to the 1960s. She also gives us the chart. And again, it's pretty big, so I'm not going to open it. But this is a chart that you use to draft everything once you have taken your measurements. This compilation by Mrs. Pew also gives us the Haslam sewing guide, if you will. Um, that way, if you are not terribly familiar with how to sew, you'll have here sort of the vintage techniques that the Haslam system itself suggested. And this book doesn't actually give us any patterns, but Mrs. Pew has pattern pamphlets that she's also reproduced. Sometimes you can find them on Pinterest. Uh, you can for sure buy from other people on Etsy. And so if you have this book on how to draft the foundations, you still have to get a booklet with patterns. And even today we have systems like this. If you've never heard of the Luder Low system, it is kind of like the Haslam system. You, uh, I mean, it's based on your body measurements and then you use special rulers to enlarge pattern diagrams to your size. And all of this is to say that whether you want patterns for today, for 2023, whether you want patterns that are vintage, antique, 19th century, costume, whatever it may be, there are options out there that are not commercially drafted patterns. There are options out there that let you bypass, in many cases, either patterns that don't go up to your size or down to your size, or patterns that everybody else has. There are a lot of options. And so I hope that you have taken away something useful from these uh, two videos. If you did enjoy them, please let me know in the comments. And I have to say that I haven't drafted from all of them, but I have plans. And so if you'd like to see me try to draft something from one of these systems or one of these books, also let me know in the comments and maybe I'll entertain the idea. But that is all that I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.